Hey guys, today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be running head-to-head -head tests between the new Mac Mini with the M4 Pro chip against the old Mac Mini with the original M1 chip. Now about three years ago when that M1 chip first came out, we bought everyone in our production offices those Mac Minis and back then they were fire, but we are thinking it might be time to give everyone an upgrade. So I'm gonna give someone the day off and we are gonna run some very Final Cut Pro specific tests on these two Macs. So here are the specs of these two different machines and clearly looking at this, I'm expecting that the Mac Minis with the M4 Pro chips are totally gonna blow our old Mac Minis out of the water, but we're gonna collect some hard data to see if the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro chip really is that big of an upgrade. And clearly we're not in my office right now. That's because you probably noticed that my office is so tiny and we couldn't possibly set all of this up in there. So we're working out of our production studio today and I've enlisted the help of our in-house tech guru, Connor, to set everything up. In addition to the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro chip, we're also gonna be checking out the studio display and the magic mouse, keyboard, and trackpad. And everything you see here will be linked down below. All right, let's go. So these are the two machines we're gonna be comparing. This is the old Mac Mini with the M1 chip, and this is the new Mac Mini with the M4 Pro chip. Clearly, right off the bat, you can see the difference in size between these devices. The footprint on this guy here is so much smaller than the old Mac Mini, although I will say I never thought the old Mac Mini was big at all. It does not take up a lot of desk space, but you cannot deny that this guy here is just so tiny. And for reference, I have really small hands, so this will look even smaller in your hands, I'm sure. One thing everybody's talking about is that for whatever reason, Apple decided to put the power button on this guy on the bottom, which is definitely an interesting choice. I'm not a person who turns my computer off every night. So for me, it's not that big of a deal, but I know a lot of people were not big fans of that. Another thing you'll notice looking at these guys is the difference in ports. So on the new Mac mini with the M4 Pro chip, you've got two USB ports on the front and you've got a headphone jack or a speaker jack on the front as well. On the back, you've got three Thunderbolts and you also have an HDMI port, but you should know that if you get the Mac Studio display, it does not connect by HDMI. It actually connects by Thunderbolt. So you're gonna use up one of those ports if you do have the Studio display. The Mac Mini with the M1 chip has all of its ports on the back, and it only has two Thunderbolt ports and two USB-A ports. So that's also something I'm always thinking about when we upgrade devices, is what hard drives are no longer gonna connect to a new machine, or do I at least need to get new cords for those hard drives? So definitely something to think about. So now that we've established what the external differences are between these machines, let's run our tests so we can see the difference in performance. So here's our first test. We're gonna import some media. I've got 112 gigs to import and I'm using the same SD card reader on both machines because neither one of them has an internal SD card reader. And the results? It's a tie, 20 minutes and 11 seconds on the Mac mini with the M4 Pro chip and 20 minutes and 13 seconds on the Mac mini with the M1 chip. No big improvements. Let's move on to motion tracking. I'm gonna motion track this entire clip and it is 15 minutes and 48 seconds long. It's a big one. In this case, a pretty decent improvement between the M4 Pro chip and the M1 chip with the M4 Pro Mac Mini coming in at five minutes and 54 seconds and the M1 Mac Mini coming in at eight minutes and seven seconds. Now let's do the magnetic mask. So let's say you wanted to color correct an entire interview. This might be a real life use case. This was a huge difference here. The Mac Mini with the M4 Pro chip came in at 20 minutes and 16 seconds and the M1 Mac Mini came in at 3323, huge time savings there. Now let's run out what for me is a really big timeline. This is the longest module in my Final Cut course and it times out at 30 minutes and 40 seconds. It took the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro chip three minutes and 22 seconds to render this out and the M1 Mac Mini five minutes and 58. Now let's export that same 30 minute, 40 second timeline on the M4 Pro Mac Mini. We timed out at 12 minutes and 22 seconds. And on the Mac Mini with the M1 chip, we got to 14 minutes and 35 seconds. Not a huge improvement, but it's there. 
And let's just check transfer speeds, why not? We're transferring 114 gigabytes of media. And this one again was a tie. The Mac mini with the M4 chip transferred it in two minutes and 46 seconds. And the M1 Mac mini was two minutes and 51 seconds. So I would call that a draw. So those are the results of our side-by-side -side tests. Now, obviously I'm back in my office. It's been about a week and a half since we ran that experiment. And I wanted to take the Mac mini with the M4 Pro chip back into my office and use it for about a week and see what it was like to edit on day to day. For context, I typically edit on a Mac Studio with an M1 Max chip, and I've been very happy with that machine. And I was kind of curious how a little Mac mini would compare to the Mac Studio, which even just looking at them side by side looks more substantial. And I have to say, overall, I was pleasantly surprised with the performance of the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro chip. To give you an idea of what a typical week looks like in our production office, here is a project I was working on. This library is a monster, over half a terabyte of media. It's going to be three commercials. I've also been working on this digital billboard project for another client. This is a lot of layers, a lot of magnetic masking, and the new Mac Mini handled it no problem whatsoever. And I also dug way into Apple Motion with this MoGraph project we do every year for an ongoing client. And I was using replicators and emitters and the M4 Pro chip had no problem with that either. And generally my overall impression of the new Mac mini is that it works as fast as my brain does. And I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about when you're super comfortable in Final Cut, you know where everything is, you know all your keyboard shortcuts. Sometimes when you're editing, you feel like you have to wait for your machine to catch up with you. And the M4 totally kept up with me. And that just makes editing so much more fun and pleasurable. So I really appreciated that. The thing that really stuck out to me is that I love when I'm listening to sound bites for the first time, I love to play them back in high speed by using the double L shortcut. And sometimes even my Mac Studio gets hung up doing that if I'm listening to a long soundbite in high speed and the new Mac mini never got hung up, which I couldn't believe. I was super happy about that. Also in terms of ports, I was a little afraid I was gonna be running out of ports, especially because I have the studio display hooked up with the Thunderbolt port. And that was actually surprisingly not an issue. And I think the only hard drive I had to worry about finding the right cord for was my time machine, which is one of those like mini USBs with like the little divot in the plug. Do you know what I'm talking about? And I had to just like fish out a mini USB to a USB-C and that was not a big deal at all. So the port situation was good. As far as the rest of the devices we tried, you know, the Magic Mouse is a mouse. If you're into this kind of mouse, I think you'll like that. The trackpad is interesting. I'm actually not a huge trackpad user. But if you're coming from a MacBook Pro and you're really good at the trackpad and you love the trackpad, I think it's worth picking this up. It's not for everybody, but it works really well. It feels good. It's like a very nice quality product and the battery life on it has been great. What I really love is the new Magic Keyboard. So my old keyboard did not have the Touch ID button, but my MacBook does. And I actually really have missed that here at the office having the Touch ID. So this is great if you want a new keyboard. But for me, the real standout of all these accessories is this studio display. This thing is wild. The screen is so bright. The colors are so vibrant. And honestly, I can't imagine going back to any other monitor. This thing is expensive, but in the words of the great Ferris Bueller, It is so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. So do you need to run out right now and buy a new Mac mini with the M4 Pro chip? I'm of the mindset that if the machine you have now is working for you and you're happy with it, there's no reason to go out and spend money just because something new has come out. But if your device is at end of life, or like let's say you have an Intel chip in your Mac and you're not able to use all the features in Final Cut Pro, for instance, auto transcribed captions are not available to people using Macs with Intel chips, maybe you should take a hard look at the Mac mini. I've been really impressed with this. It's a lot of power in a very small package. If you guys wanna see another review I did comparing two Mac devices, you might wanna check out the review I did on the new M4 iPad versus the M2 iPad. I'm gonna put a card to that right here and I'm gonna let YouTube pick out something it thinks you're gonna like right here. All right, thanks for watching you guys.